education nonprofit Khan Academy is experimenting with ChatGPT to power its Conmigo virtual tutor. The program is designed to talk students through math problems, reading assignments, and more, while providing personalized feedback. It can also help teachers by creating lessons plans and giving personalized feedback on students' learning. Khan Academy founder Sal Khan joins me now for more on this. Sal, thanks so much for being on. It's fascinating what you guys are doing. So walk me through this. How can Conmigo help students understand concepts like multiplication or grammar? Yeah, so as you just mentioned, it can act as a tutor. And that means unlike ChatGPT, where you could ask for an answer, it'll just give you an answer and ask it to write something, it'll just write the paper for you. We're using not ChatGPT, but the underlying technology and actually a more advanced version of it, GPT-4, which you don't get if you just use the general ChatGPT. And there, it'll act as a Socratic tutor. So if you say, say tell me the answer, so hey, I'm your tutor, I'm not gonna tell you the answer. But what I can do is I can give you a hint, I can nudge you along. How would you approach the problem? What do you think the first step is? And it really acts like a, not just a, a decent tutor, but a, a quite strong tutor. And then on the teacher side, teachers spend hours a week doing you know, 10, 15 hours a week, doing things like writing lesson plans, grading papers, uh, writing progress reports. And Conmigo can do that for teachers. Uh, and it's not that they're just offloading it all to Conmigo, but it's like a teaching assistant. They can riff with it. But we, can th we think we can reduce their time by a factor of 10 and uh, actually have more interesting lesson plans and, and, uh, and, and, give, and give students even more detailed feedback. Well, there have been some concerning reports about some AI systems giving disturbing responses. So how can you be sure Conmigo won't give inappropriate answers when communicating with children? Yeah, this is something we take very seriously. Uh, there's a whole bunch of safeguards that we have been putting in place over the, the course of the last year. We've been on we've been working on this uh, for, for a little while with OpenAI. Uh, we all conversations that an under 18 student has, they are viewable by parents and teachers. Uh, it has to be attached to a parent or a teacher account. We have a second artificial intelligence that monitors the conversations. And if any of those go to a, let's say, not productive place, then parents and teachers get actively notified. And then we've also spent hundreds of hours uh, designing these prompts, crafting, steering the AI and testing it so that it can give answers. Uh, but it won't. Uh, sorry, it won't give answers. But it will help the student, uh, and also it won't. It won't try to weigh in in on conversations in a in a biased way. So we've been spending a lot of time uh, stress testing that. We've been working with about ten thousand folks, including in mainstream school districts like Newark Public Schools. Uh, so we're feeling pretty good about where it is now. Now, for for students, it sounds like you're describing tutoring, which often happens outside the classroom. For teachers, grading and other things that will save them time also outside the classroom. Do you see a role for this inside the classroom? And if so, what does that look like? I think that's what's exciting about this. Uh, over the last several years, uh, some many folks know, billions of dollars uh, came into the public school system to help stem some of the losses that happened during COVID. And a lot of that money went to traditional tutoring. Unfortunately, what happened is that tutoring happened after school. It wasn't connected to students' schoolwork. So oftentimes the kids who needed it most didn't go to that tutoring. And, and those that did, it, it wasn't exactly tied to what was going on in class. Because this is technology, we can actually bring it exactly into the school. When a student has a question while they're doing their assignments, they can get that question answered. It's not going to do the solution for them, but it'll help them. It'll help unstick them. And then it can report back to the teacher, just like a good tutor or teaching assistant would do. It can report back to the teacher and say, hey, I've just been working with Sal on, um, on, on, on his trigonometric identities. Uh, it seems like he still has a little bit of trouble with the law of cosines. Uh, you might you might want to spend a little bit more time on that. I do want to emphasize, I don't think it's a replacement for a human being. I think it's something that can fill in the gaps when a human being isn't there. In the early days, a lot of folks know I started Khan Academy by tutoring family members. And I started making uh, on-demand videos for them. This was 14, 15 years ago. And my cousins told me they liked me better on YouTube. It wasn't saying that they liked the YouTube vetters better than me. It was more that that those videos were there when I couldn't be there and there was no judgment, no stigma. And what generative AI and artificial intelligence and Conmigo allows us to do is that same thing. I think the human connection is going to be even more valuable in, in the world we're getting into, but in those times where a human being cannot be there, or if you have a question and you're a little bit afraid of, of being judged because you forgot that thing from a few years ago, there's a little bit less of a stigma when you're asking a, an AI.
Now, there are major concerns, though, about students relying too much on AI or using it to cheat, right? As kids, we learned how to use calculators, but we also learned how to do math and how to do division and so on. So you say that we can put guardrails in place to solve some of these issues. What do those guardrails look like and what needs to be done before this becomes mainstream in schools everywhere? Yeah, so the guardrails are, one, the AI should not give you the answers, but it should act like a good Socratic tutor, oftentimes throw the question back on you, but also nudge you along and, and give you some hints, but not give the answer as any good tutor would do. All interactions are recorded. Uh, second AI that's moderating them. None of the information that's going on between the student and the AI is being used to train the AI. That's a gray area in, in artificial intelligence right now. So we just decided to just do that all on, on, the, on the up and up. And then on the possibility for, say, students going to another application and cheating. Let's say Conmigo has all of these safeguards in place, but what's to stop them from going to chat GPT and getting a paper written? We're working on modalities so that a teacher can assign a paper within Conmigo, and Conmigo will do will will act as a writing coach and say, "Hey, let's brainstorm what your topic is going to be. Let's outline together." And just as Bill Gates mentioned, when the student starts writing it, it can highlight parts of the of the paper and say, "Hey, you you can make a better argument here. This doesn't really support your thesis statement, or your grammar is a little bit off right over there." And then report back to the teacher and say, "Hey, I've been working on this with Sal." Uh, the, he's already done the outlining. I'm still working on his thesis statement. And if a student just goes to chat GPT and copies and pastes something into the window, the AI can just tell the teacher, hey, something shady just happened. They just copy and pasted something probably from chat GPT. Following the progress along the way. And if you don't see that progress, all of a sudden, just a big cut and paste, then that's a sign that something's off. Exactly. Very interesting. Khan Academy founder, Sal Khan. Sal, we appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, everyone. George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.